Huddersfield sacked Mark Fotheringham midweek last week and reports suggest that Neil Warnock rides again. 19 years and seven months after being appointed Huddersfield town manager for the first time. One last job for the legendary manager. Let's start there. Uh, let's go back to Fotheringham's sacking. Talk me through it. Your thoughts? Yeah, not not massively surprised um, that Fotheringham's reign is over. Um, I can see why Huddersfield as a club probably felt in a position to um, hire somebody without much managerial experience. It's, it's something I don't necessarily um, argue against anyway, but after the success of Carlos Corberan, they've tried to go out and make another in- innovative appointment of someone who has been um, a successful or you know a, a number two at, at some bigger clubs. Immediately his... Um, at least his media persona suggested that he was something a bit different to what we used to. I've said fairly conclusively over the course of his reign that I didn't see a great deal there um, to, to marry up with his words. You know, he talked about setting high standards. He clearly bombed out quite a lot of, of first team players from the from the first team picture, which is an issue that Warnock's going to have to deal with now. You know, I'm pretty sure Neil Warnock would have quite liked to have Sorba Thomas um in his squad, I think he probably would have quite liked to have John Russell in his squad. Um, players like this who have been cast aside by Fotheringham um, and now he is no longer there either. Um, and I, you know, clearly the, the idea was they thought they were getting in someone with a very high ceiling who could feasibly keep them up this season and then be the manager to take them on longer term. And now they've decided to take an option which is very much seen to be a short term fix. I, I you know, you already see a lot of the rhetoric coming out of this appointment being, well, that's Huddersfield safe then. You know, they, he guarantees safety. And that isn't true. I mean, it's one of those weird things where you've, you've now got Mick McCarthy managing Blackpool, who guarantees safety. You've got Neil Warnock managing Huddersfield, who guarantees safety. Like, what happens if they all get, you know, what if Big Sam comes in next week at, you know, guarantee safety. Is no one going to go down? Tony Pulis reversing yeah, his retirement. It, it's mythical. Um, now, having said that, Warnock probably gives them a much better shout of staying up than, than most appointments they could have made. I'm not denying that for one second. But I do think maybe, you know, the, the fallacy that surrounds um, these, uh, you know, firefighter managers has gone a little bit too far now where we get to February or March and suddenly whoever's down there picks up the phone and gives them a call. I personally think at least one of Mick McCarthy or or Neil Warnock will probably end up getting relegated this season. Both of them might well do. Now, Warnock obviously has an affinity with the Huddersfield fans. It's been, well, some Huddersfield fans, plenty of them weren't alive when he was manager there the first time. Um, But he had a couple of decent seasons there, uh, got them promoted um, had the first season at the new stadium, got promoted at Wembley, uh, kind of walked out on the club a, a couple of days after the Wembley final against Bristol Rovers. Um, can, can pretty conclusively be credited with, um, with Andy Booth's uh, rise to stardom. You know, he was a struggling youth player when, when Warnock came in, Warnock brought him into the first team fold and, and obviously the rest there is history. Um, so yeah, he's got the affinity to the club. He is someone who I'm sure will, will be seen to, to possibly galvanise them. I'm not entirely sure. I, I think if you're going to make this appointment, you know, Borough did it a couple of seasons ago to some decent effect. My concern is that I'm not sure this Huddersfield squad, as it stands at the moment, has the, the necessary quality to, to to get out of this mess. And I think lumping a, a lot of that um, responsibility on, on Warnock's firefighting ability, it, it may scan well and it may be something that the most football fans think will work, but I'm not necessarily sure that it is there. The other interesting <laughs> aside to this is that if, if Blackpool and Huddersfield do stay up, it'll likely be at the expense of Cardiff. And Mick McCarthy and Neil Warnock both playing a massive part in Cardiff's relegation is, um, yeah, would be quite something. Just going back to Fotheringham, he got, he got 21 points from his 20 games. And no one will pretend that that is an incredible, incredible points return. But I'd wager that's probably more points than your average championship fan would have guessed he got. More than one point per game, just about. 
more than five other teams in the same time period. So while Fotheringham was Huddersfield manager, they weren't the worst team in the league or the second or the third worst team in the league. They were better than relegation level. They were certainly better than the seven points in nine before he arrived. Clearly not good enough to get out of the relegation battle. I'll be honest, George, I've completely lost grasp of whether Warnock is a good manager for the 2023 version of the championship. It's impossible to separate Warnock, the legend, the media uh, darling from the football manager at this point. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. I think at the very least, the fan base will get fully behind him. And that's probably worth a point or two. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, really positive atmosphere, supportive atmosphere probably is worth some points. Yeah, I think that's probably the tangible... um benefit well i mean we don't want to disrespect warnock i mean if, if you look back at his recent jobs in recent seasons obviously he did an incredible job at cardiff um, but came into rotherham over a very short period of time basically doing the exact job that huddersfield want him to do and did it well they won six of his 16 games only losing four and then at borough kept them up initially got the job on a, on a longer term basis and things didn't really go to plan you know he i guess i'm tying myself up in knots a little bit because just in my mind, this isn't really the way that I would want my club to, to operate. But for Huddersfield, who you know have had who lost their manager on the eve of the season, have had two really poor appointments, like polar opposite, except for the fact they're inexperienced. Very, very different appointments in Schofield internal, and then Fotheringham from left field. I think for them to go out and get someone who has a relationship with the club and who has a track record at doing exactly this job. Um, this is maybe circumstantially one of the one of the times where you say fair enough, um, but there's no denying that so many good decisions took Huddersfield from the bottom end of the championship to Wembley last May. So many bad decisions have been made basically since that day at Wembley. <laughs> 